Hailstones crash through windows. They shred trees and crops, pummel livestock, damage roofs, wreak havoc on cars and everything underneath its wrath. Hail can turn a scorching summer ground into a winter wonderland in minutes. Oh my God. Sometimes baseballs just fall from the sky. Other times, strong winds hurl hailstones sideways like bullets. If you're caught away from shelter during a severe hailstorm, you've got a problem. If you're a storm chaser, hail is your nemesis. Oh man, no hail please. Yet you proudly wear your hail dents like victory battle scars. Dude, brand new truck, right? Oh yeah. A hailstone forms as a tiny water droplet journeys up above the freezing level in some of the most beautiful and dramatic thunderstorms. But how does it get so big? And how big can it get? Look at that everywhere. In an environment conducive of a severe hailstorm, this rising air or updraft is often exploding into lowered freezing levels. This is the factory where hail is made. When the droplet freezes, this process releases heat, which keeps the stone's exterior in a sticky liquid phase. As the little stone journeys through the cloud, it captures more and more water on the surface. The inner layer freezes and the hailstone grows a layer. You can see the different onion-like layers in many of the stones. Hailstones can also grow by colliding and conglomerating with others, one of the reasons they come in such a myriad of funky shapes. Here's a disc-shaped stone with crystal star-like protrusions. Here's one shaped like a bomb. Here's one shaped like Stewie Griffin. These upward winds sustain ice pebbles, and the longer they hang around up there, the larger they tend to get. But some intense updrafts blow up over 100 miles per hour. This is where things really start to get freaky. Eventually the weight of the hailstone overcomes the updraft winds and it falls to earth, often appearing as bright white curtains. Isolated thunderstorms with hail downdrafts set the stage for the most vibrant rainbows. Well, that goes down to the brightest rainbow I have ever seen. That is crazy. If the storm matures into a high precipitation monster, the thick hail core often has a breathtaking turquoise glow. And because these storms often occur in the late afternoon through evening when angled yellow sunlight blasts into the hail core, the yellow and blue make green. There's that beautiful green. Look at that turquoise green color. And that's why people associate green storm clouds with tornadoes. When photographing hail, you need a size reference that people can relate to, like a coin, a hand, or Barbie's head. The largest hailstone officially measured landed in Vivian, South Dakota, July 23, 2010. It was 8 inches across and weighed almost 2 pounds. I want to know what an 8 inch hailstone would look and feel like, so I'm making an artificial one in my freezer right now. It's almost ready to pull out and smash into something. So how do storm chasers deal with these daily bombardments of hail? Often the same powerful updrafts that create giant hail drop tornadoes. These storms are called supercells, and supercells are shy about people filming their dangly bits. So they throw hail at you and your cameras. There is a funnel cloud on the ground. Being, oh no, the hail is getting huge. In fact, these storms do everything they can to deter storm chasers from exposing their dangly bits to the world. I'm snow plowing. <laughs> You gotta see how high this is on the side of the road. They cover the road in ice so you can't drive fast. Then they cover the roads in wet slippery leaves so you can't drive fast. Stuff slippery. If that doesn't work, they drop buckets of hail to reduce the air temperature to the dew point, causing hail fog. Doesn't that sound like fun, chasing tornadoes in the fog? And of course, if that doesn't slow you down, they break your windows. This here in Montana. There's these random gusts that, that come by and hit us every now and then yeah. on this road. Most chasers just avoid the hail cores, often revealed on radar with a pink or purple spot. 
Other chasers would rather sacrifice portions of their precious view with metal guards to block the icy shrapnel as they punch through cores. <laughs> Could resist, Daniel. And others have the luxury of thick, super heavy-duty glass to shoot through. Me, I yell four-letter words at it, and then I call a buddy who just replaces my windows for a hundred bucks a pop. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, there's the wind chill. Ah, damn it. I dig it. That just came inside of my car and broke. There's my windshield here. Let's see if that big stone in my freezer is ready to smash into something. So this is roughly the size of the largest hailstone ever recorded. Can you imagine this sucker hitting you in the head at over 100 miles per hour? That hardly did a damn thing. Storm chasers need to mount these all over their cars. Hail injures about 24 people per year here in the U.S. The last hail-related death occurred in Texas in 2000 after a man got struck in the head. On April 30th, 1888, devastating hailstorms killed 246 people in India. On average, hail causes almost a billion dollars of damage to crops each year in the U.S., and unlike rain and snow, there isn't a single thing useful about it. Hey guys, check out the size of these hailstones. Hey guys, check out this warm Coca-Cola I just found underneath my seat. Okay, so there is one use for hail. Thanks for watching, friends.